You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Welcome to All About Nursing with your host, Dr. Joyce Batchelor. Executive Nurse Advisor Dr. Batchelor will present the significant role nurses play in providing health care in a multitude of health care settings. Listen to some of today's key nurses who work and practice in academia settings and talk about the challenges they face in today's modern medical world. So please welcome the host of All About Nursing, Dr. Joyce Batchelor. Good evening. I'm your host, Dr. Joyce Batchelor, on All About Nursing, and we're live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm very excited this evening to have three very distinguished guests with me that are actually all from Brazil. And I'd like to just give you a little bit of background on each person before I have them begin to tell their stories. The first individual I'm going to introduce is Dr. Janine Scheimer. She is a graduate in nursing and obstetrics in 1983. She has a master's degree in obstetric nursing from the Federal University of St. Paulo in 1989. She has a doctorate in maternal and child nursing from the Federal University of São Paulo in 1995. She is currently a full professor at the Department of Nursing and Women's Health. She's also the director of the Polista School of Nursing and editor-in-chief of Acta Polista Nursing Magazine. Vice President of the Management Council of the, of the, of the University Hospitals of UNIFESP, and I'm going to let you explain what that is afterwards. And then a member also of the National Technical Chamber of Transplantation Ethics and Research for the National Transplant System. Uh, my second guest is Dr. Barita de Aguirre Rosa, and she is also a supervisor of the postgraduate nursing program at the university and leader of the organ and tissue donation and transplantation study group. Also serves as the associate editor of the Acta Polista Nursing Journal of Nursing School and as a member of the International Transplant Nursing Society. Back in 2018, she began the coordination of a major project to really look at the communication plan of the surveillance process for the use of organs, tissues, and human cells for transplantation in Brazil with the United Nations Development Program and representatives from the Ministry of Health, National Health Surveillance Agency. And my third guest is Rita, Dr. Rita Simone Lopez, who is a professor in the Department of Clinical and Surgical Nursing in, in Polista School of Nursing. She is also has a PhD in health sciences from the cardiology area at Federal University and a master's degree in medical and biological sciences from the same university and currently is a coordinator for the cardiology program of the multiprofessional residents in U, UNIFSEP. She also has experience in nursing with clinical and surgical cardiac patients. I think what you're going to be hearing tonight is how nurses really work on very key issues like the organ and tissue and do, uh, donations and transplant across the, the world and the kind of coordination that happens between Brazil and the United States. And so welcome to all three of you. And so thank you so much for being on the show this evening. I'd like to start, if we can, with uh, Janine, if you could tell us a little about when and how you decided to become a nurse. My first choice was to study medicine. As the time passed, I uh, desired to work with healthcare, growing me, and nursing was become the best decision. I definitely made. Okay. Yes. And how about you, Rita? When did you decide and how did you get influenced to become a nurse? Oh, uh, Joyce, thank you for inviting us, first of all. And it, it, it's amazing. Uh, thank you so much. 
Um, so I decided to become a nurse when I was uh, 15 years old. And uh, I watched a British show, I, but I don't remember the, the name. But it made me, it made me wonder uh, how beautiful it was to take care of uh, other people. And uh, I, I was, uh, wanted to take care and welcome people who need assistance, uh, some kind of help. Uh, because this, I, I decided to become a nurse. It's, it's, for me, it's so good. It's a privilege. Oh, that's wonderful. And so maybe, Bar- Bartira, maybe you could share a little bit of some of the highlights that you've experienced during your nursing career. Yes, of course. Um, well, when uh, transplant legislation in Brazil uh, was passed in 1997, I was finishing my fellowship program in surgical nursing, and uh, I opened one of the organ procurement organizations in São Paulo, Brazil. Um, in 2000, I started to work at uh, Albert Einstein Hospital, a, a big hospital that you have here. Uh, so I was able to participate in the implementation of the shared governance and the primary nursing, as well as um, assistance uh, in certification with the, the Joint Commission. It's a very important to me and a good experience. Um, in, uh, in 2010, uh, I was accepted as a professor at the Federal University of São Paulo, uh, where I had got my undergraduate, master's and doctorate degree, when I meet uh, to also when I meet uh, Dr. Linda Oller, uh, it's so wonderful for us. She helped uh, us with research sometimes, and uh, we had a good partnership. And they started in uh, 12 9 a, a good partnership with, with students that didn't uh, the program uh, in transplants in the US. And uh, today we are making this international uh, partnership is so good for us, so good. And that's wonderful because I think it's going to be very interesting to hear how much work's been done to really assure that there's good standardization of the care that's happening to our transplant patients across the, the, the different countries. And so that's very, very exciting. Uh, so, uh, Janine, did you want to say a little bit about some kind of highlights from your career that you'd like to share with the audience? Well, the nursing career made it possible for me to build an academic career by become a full professor and senior researcher. Uh, also, I participate in the formulation of Brazil policies in the area of the women's health care in the Ministry of Health for seven years in national management. Management experience has always had to take up directorship positions at the university as director of the university hospital and police nursing school of the Federal Universe of São Paulo in the basic list. That's wonderful. Um, We'll hear a little bit more about that for sure as we continue to have our discussion this evening. And I thank you for pointing out, too, that um, Dr. Linda Oler, who works at uh, New York Presbyterian, has been very instrumental in helping to work with all of you to really look at a fellowship program to assist and make sure that the education and training of nurses is uh, at a high level in both countries. And so that's really very exciting to hear. And so... I think we'll talk a bit more about that in just a little bit. Right now, it's time for us to go to a break. So this is all about nursing. I'm Dr. Joyce Batchelor. We're live on the BBM Global Network in TuneIn Radio, and it's time to take a short break. French Rastafarian baker Chef Hugues Mott is a fourth-generation baker and has worked in 11 countries across three continents. 
born in Mulhouse, France, he began apprenticing in his father's bakery at age 12 and has devoted his life to learning cultures of the world from inside kitchens across the globe. He also teaches traditional French baking by hosting demonstrations and classes, and his passion for baking is reflected in his delicious confections. With a deep respect for discipline and his Rastafarian way of life, Chef Uvmat exemplifies commitment to tradition and culture in a global world. Traveling extensively and combining a myriad of flavors into his recipes, Chef Ugmat brings a unique approach to baking. To read more about the French Rastafarian baker, visit www.frenchchefoug.com. That's H-U-G-U-E-S. Bon appétit and bless up. Tune into It's All About You with host Dr. Martha Latz, a lively weekly broadcast on BBM Global Network, one of the most empowering shows for time-starved, overscheduled multitaskers. The professional expertise of Dr. Latz is directly available live every Thursday at 1 p.m. to answer and address concerns about relationships, life transitions of career, meeting, dating, and committed relationships. It's All About You with Dr. Latz will expand your understanding of current current concerns across your relationships by broadening and expanding possible solutions in developing skills for mutually desired outcomes. Dr. Martha's expertise is as a licensed marriage and family therapist, life, transition coach, and all things to do with communication at work, home, and with friends. Check out her website at auniquetherapycenter.com. Welcome back, everyone. You're listening to All About Nursing, live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And I'm Dr. Joyce Batchelor, the host of the show. Prior to the first commercial, we were talking a little bit about the work that's going on between the Brazil and the United States when it comes to tissue organ donation and really looking at transplantation to make sure that the care that our patients receive is really top notch. And so I think it would be great if we could hear a little bit from you, Bartira, about the major issues that you and your team are addressing? Yes. Um, today we need uh, to tweak the training of professionals uh, to meet of health services. It, it's important for us. Um, and this requires a major change in our training in nursing schools. Uh, we also have a difficulty in implementing, implementing Advanced basic nursing practice uh, concerning healthcare. Also, we are aware that it happens not only in Brazil but uh, and in our in our school. Uh, we must try to implement the best advanced basic nursing practice in healthcare assistance. So it's so important to. Um, training of the professionals uh, with this mission and the vision. That's, that's great. Mm-hmm. And so what are some of the outcomes that you're really interested in trying to make sure that you all are achieving as you're doing this work? Um, well, you need to implement taking this uh, that, I, that I talked uh, about advanced nursing practice in Brazil and improve the health care for different communities in our country. You have a, a different uh, system in health in Brazil, in, in different states, and we have different needs for this, uh, for, for promote, uh, for improve the impact of nursing nursing care in the area of organ donation and transplantation. For this, it's important to um, uh, uh, could be approached with uh, Dr. Linda, with another center in organ, organ procurement and transplantation in the West. It's important. Um, and the first of all, uh, and our type of organ donation is consent in Brazil. This is 1997. Uh, and the means that the family decides on donation of their deceased relative after the diagnosis of brain death. So if the family decides to donate multiple organs, several tests are performed uh, after, and organ uh, so removal. Um, 
That's that's great. Um, I was curious because I think you said a little bit, but I'd be curious if the way that you all are doing transplant organ donation in Brazil is really similar to the U.S. Are there differences that you would note between the two? And I don't know, maybe Rita, you could answer that for us. Yes, it's, 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 it's similar. It's similar. Um, our our law is similar, uh, like uh, co- uh, donation is consent and the distribution of organs is, is the same because it's, uh, it's important of exams about uh, um, HLA, uh, immunogenetic exam is important. So uh, some kind of is real similar, and we um, uh, our students go there, uh, they training and discuss with team uh, about uh, um, achieving, interesting achieving about the outcomes, and of course the outcomes in uh, transplant is um, the outcomes is, is the same around the world. Uh, that I mean. Um, the survival, the, the mortality, and the, the patients of the list, waiting at least, it's, a, it's the same in Brazil and US and around the world. And uh, the global observatory by uh, World Health Organization control this around the world. So Brazil uh, is, uh, is the same. same. Yeah. And yes, so I was just curious and too if, the, if you have this, if you have pretty good. Oh, I'm sorry. And the liver is the second of the number, absolute number, um, in comparison of US. So, and US um, has a first number in um, around the world, and Brazil is the second in, in number of transplants, kidney and the liver. And so I was curious if what well, you done to be successful in yeah, having yeah. organs being donated by people in Brazil. I mean, because that's really a huge thing that's needed in order to have a successful transplant program is really having people be donors. What have you been doing to really try to get that to be more accepted within the people, like with the people you work with? Yes, because we need to improve this quality and the safety in Brazil. It's important now for us. Uh, we have a numbers. We have almost uh, things that uh, the clinical and surgery is the same. Our university is a, a, a big center of transplants. We have uh, seven transplants per day and uh, almost uh, one one thousand per year. And it's, so it's, it's uh, a big center. But I, I think uh, in, in nowadays uh, you need is necessary, it's urgent for us and the professors, of course, uh, development and improve the quality and the, the process of quality and safety in Brazil. Uh, for this, um, the partnership with Linda and another research, but, but principal Linda Ola, it's very important. Because uh, she she has this in your head. She, she does this in your head. So maybe, Rita, you could answer the question on how are you helping to have people understand the importance of becoming, or, you know, having their loved ones be organ donors at, when it's appropriate to ask? Oh, uh, well, you don't have a you don't have a, a list for this. You just uh, conversation um, happening with the interview with the family after brain death, and after this during interview for decision of a family, uh, family decide during uh, this moment about uh, donation or not donation. It's very difficult, of course, because it's a it's a um, a difficult moment uh, because uh, the family lost uh, the relatives, uh, but it's necessary. So it's just yeah. it's just, it's, the name is donation uh, is consent donation. The name is this. Yes, yeah, so I was curious too, uh, and we can talk about this in a little bit because uh, certainly the number of 
organ donations that you have really does influence as you were describing the the number of transplants you can do we'll talk about that a little bit right a little bit in a few minutes right now we're coming to you live from the bmn global network and tune in radio this is all about nursing i'm dr joyce bachelor and we'll continue this conversation when we come back if you seek a courageous advocate prepare to champion your rights with consumer service agencies that support aging populations carol ann hamilton is the one for you carol ann is an elder care coach author and speaker with a quarter million hours lived experience successfully supporting unculpable aging parents as a result of a challenging journey carol ann revolutionizes how stressed out caregivers restore serenity to their worlds she also brings over 25 years of change management expertise in fortune 500 settings to catalyze urgent transformation within the elder care industry carol ann is a popular speaker at conferences across north america she has appeared via TV, radio, and print globally. Now you can tune in weekly to get a dose of her inspiration plus down-to-earth advice to cope with even the most difficult aging parents. Listen Wednesdays at 9 a.m. Eastern on Bold Brave Media and Tune In Radio. Master of words, powerful player. What life-changing words can Dr. Janet Smith Warfield pull out of her magical toolbox that just might mysteriously open a door you never knew was there? A door to free yourself from fear forever. Transform your rage into right action. Release your guilt. Position you into a life of freedom, purpose, passion, power, and peace. All quite suddenly, unexpectedly, and almost miraculously, with no effort on your part. Join Dr. Janet every Monday at noon Eastern on Dancing with Words, Dancing with Wisdom on the BBM Global Network as she and her guests show you how words map our experiences, immersing you in a sound bath that relaxes your muscles, opens your mind, and supports you in co-creating your extraordinary life. I'm your host, Dr. Joyce Batchelor, on All About Nursing, and we're live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Before the break, we were talking about the great work that's going on in Brazil around organ donation and transplant and the work that they've been doing to really assure that they have a high quality program and the outcomes that they track sounds to be very similar to what we do here in the U.S. And so I think it might be a great time to transition to you all talking a little bit more about the fellowship program that you all are involved with that I know that you're doing with um, New York Presbyterian Hospital. So maybe, Rita, you can tell us how that's working. Yes. uh, uh, Well, uh, about the fellowship program, uh, we have a multidisciplinary program uh, in organ donation and transplantation. Uh, We do this because it's necessary improvement uh, quality and safety, all things that I talk about. So we started the fellowship program in our universe in Sao Paulo in uh, 2010. So we have a program in 19 specialties, cardiology, intensive care of adults, clinical and surgical, respiratory, obstetric nursing, uh, medical physics, uh, gastroenterology, uh, neurology, oncology, and uh, human, he- human health, mental health, and transplantation and organ donation or organ, organ procurement. Uh, so in our program, like your resident, uh, that I mean, we have five professions in transplantation and organ donation fellowship program. We have nursing, uh, physio- physiotherapy, uh, psychology, pharmacy and dentistry. So uh, this program is during uh, two years program and we have a competitive program for 10 students uh, for uh, one position available. It's, it's about this. And how long is the fellowship program that you're that you've been working on? Oh, since nine, uh, since uh, uh, 2010. And, and uh, what? Actually, we have. Oh, sorry. I was going to say, and when someone's in the fellowship program, how long are they actually in that fellowship program? Beautiful. Beautiful. Oh, two years. 
two years oh, in okay. the program. Uh, and we have uh, uh, an exam for selection, a written and practical exam. And uh, these two years on the program is our workload over 5,000 hours during two years, no? That I mean, uh, six hours per week. Um, it means uh, 48 hours clinical practice and 12 hours in theory. And the final, uh, they have a test during the, during the program uh, and uh, it, it means uh, ex exclusive dedication, training, receive scholarship for this. And I think it's great that you were describing that you've made this interdisciplinary, which I think is very, very important to having all of those different uh, specialists getting trained in your program. And I would imagine you did that very intentionally because transplant really does require everybody working together from all the different disciplines. Is that an accurate statement? Yes. Uh, they have a training in therapy. It's, it's helped me together. Uh, they... they they walk in together, like uh, one nursing, one physiotherapy, one uh, psychology, one pharmacy, and one yeah. dentist training together. And they go to uh, intensive care together, go to the cardiology, cardiology together for discuss about multidisciplinary care uh, in team. It's important for us. The, the, the word important is team. Um, so... The, for this uh, happening, they receive a scholarship per month, per month. Now, where does that scholarship money come from? Is that something that y'all, your organization have set up to really support people doing this? Uh, sorry, each student receives. Yes, each is present. Mm -hmm. It is children to receive it for uh, dedicating in this training. And uh, our hostel, but uh, they go to, they go to uh, the center of transplanting to, they go to the another hostel excellence in cardiology or our team or, um, uh, kidney transplant or liver transplant, they, they do this. Uh, that's wonderful. Like and to the go mm -hmm. ahead, say that again. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, this is a training service in intensive because six, uh, six hours per week is, uh, is difficult for them, but it's very important. And uh, all professors help them for development a good practice and uh, good uh, tests and uh, more, more than this, uh, development of the good attitudes ethical in this area, organ donation and transplantation. So do you have a pretty rigorous process to select the people that you send to this fellowship? Because it sounds like it's quite an investment that you're making. I was just curious how you make that decision. Yes, yes, they uh, they they need the help for um, the, uh, a good decision. It's important, of course, for these. Uh, we have a discipline, a theoretical discipline. Uh, so we have a methodology. Uh, we have a bioethics and ethics, statistical, and all the, the all disciplines for. Uh, for them, for resolving some problems, and of course, uh, they have uh, uh, give us in the final of the program uh, one uh, research too. So it's important. That's great. As I was listening to, you, I was thinking, wow, you're spending a lot of time and money <clears throat> with them, and you want to make sure that when they finish this, they come back to your country and really work for you. Have you had issues with people deciding that maybe they don't want to come back to Brazil? They'd like to stay in the U.S., or do you have something that helps to have people understand the importance of actually coming back to do the work that you all need done? Yeah. 
Yeah. Ah, okay. Thank you. <laughs> yes, it's, it's, it's so difficult, but uh, we have a, a important uh, investment in Brazil um, in our uh, improving the professional, so mm. multidisciplinary professionals. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. So we are coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. This is All About Nursing Show. I'm Dr. Joyce Batchelor, the host of the show, and we'll be right back. Author, radio show host, and coach John M. Hawkins reveals strategies to help gain perspective, build confidence, find clarity, achieve goals. John M. Hawkins' new book, Coached to Greatness, Unlock Your Full Potential with Limitless Growth. Published by iUniverse, Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them, rediscover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies, find settings that allow them to be the most productive, and track their progress towards accomplishing goals. Listen to John Hawkins' My Strategy, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Mike Zorick, a three-time California state champion in Greco-Roman wrestling at 114 pounds. Mike, blind since birth, was born in Hartford, Connecticut. He was a six-time national placer, including two seconds, two-thirds, and two-fourths. He also won the Veterans Folk Style Wrestling twice at 152 pounds. In all these tournaments, he was the only blind competitor. Nancy Zorick, a creative spirit whose talents have taken her to the stage and into galleries and exhibitions in several states. Her father, a commercial artist who shared his instruments with his daughter and helped her fine-tune her natural abilities, influenced her decision to follow in his footsteps. Ms. Zorick has enjoyed a fruitful career doing what she loves. Listen Saturday mornings at 12 Eastern for The Nancy and Mike Show for heartwarming stories and interesting talk on the BBM Global Network. You are listening to All About Nursing live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm Dr. Joyce Batchelor, the host of the show. And prior to our break, we were talking about the incredible fellowship that's been set up between the uh, New York Presbyterian University and Brazil to really make sure that they have a multidisciplinary team that's getting trained that can come back and really be able to provide high quality care. And I think that uh, we were chatting a little bit about how to make sure that people come back and actually stay with you because we're all competing for the same talent that's out there sometimes. And it's a huge investment that you make if it's a two-year fellowship. So thank you for sharing that. As we were just talking about that, I think what was making me really kind of curious is if you could talk a little bit about what are the nursing schools in general doing in Brazil to really address the healthcare system issues that you are facing in your country. And maybe, Janine, you could start off with that for us. Okay. Well, Joyce, uh, Brazil was a public health system that serves uh, 109 million uh, habitants as a continental site, uh, hostel and outpatient care network. And nursing is a critical to maintaining in the system with diagnostic and therapeutic technologies uh, that have made healthcare specialized and costly. We, we currently have not enough nurses to develop patient quality care practice. Our school is participating in the worldwide nursing out campaign. Awesome. But the biggest challenge, challenge is to incorporate new techniques, teaching technolo- technologies, uh, inadequate number of the teachers to provide hands-on training, especially in hostel and outpatient clinics that have constant budget difficulties. And training advancing practice nurses is 
especially in primary health care, becomes a challenge for us. So you have the same kind of challenges with access to care being readily available to the people in your country that we have in the U.S., I would imagine. Uh, is, is that accurate? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, the same. Uh, yeah. The, the, the nursing now campaign uh, uh, for the important for nurses in the world. Yes, I was um, actually at the uh, Nursing Now USA meeting in um, uh, in North Carolina, Chapel Hill, last week, and it was very exciting to hear about the kind of work that's going on across the the world to really look at 2020 being the year of the nurse and really trying to look at how nurses can help improve access to care and so many other issues because we have so many nurses in the in the world. So that was pretty exciting to uh, hear about. I was curious because one of the things that we talked about as well is, you know, is having an adequate pipeline of nurses coming up through the ranks. And I was just curious if you are experiencing a nursing shortage or have challenges with your keeping your own nurses in your country because there's certainly a lot of opportunity for nurses to travel. Can you say a little bit about that, like how how you're doing? Yes. What we are doing um, Joyce, it's uh, Rita. It's, um, I tell, thank you so much for this opportunity uh, to show the little bit about the nursing in Brazil. Uh, for us, I think that we have a lot of the challenges, but um, to construct the build or the the great and the very strong uh, professional is the great challenge that we have. Because different to uh, the different way in the U.S. in Brazil, we need to improve our career, and the people and the population need to recognize the nurse like uh, as a, a great professional for us to change the health system, health numbers, and uh, our great challenge is this: um, to educate the population that the nurse is possible to change our our perspective here in Brazil. It's different, it's different like in the U.S. Yes. because U.S. the nurse is a trained a professional, but I think that we have a, a good and a big steps that we need to uh, to achieve for to uh, stay the same way that the U.S. Yes, I was really impressed in meeting some people that are doing a lot of international work and and one organization that was actually helping to provide free content to faculty in some of the countries to really help them elevate up the level of knowledge and training that would be happening in their, their schools. So it sounds like it's pretty exciting as as a way to start trying to move the work faster across the world and help to improve the health of the people that we take care of because we, we have a lot of challenges, as you all know. Is that accurate for you guys, too? Yeah. Yeah. So yes, if uh, we have a uh, uh, working together in uh, all, all of the world is the best way that we have uh, achieved this result. Uh, Professor Janine said that we need to uh, train professors and nurses with a technology. We think that technology is like uh, media, social, social media, apps, blogs for education, population, educate uh, professionals too, is I think that the best way that you can achieve that uh, what, what we have a, like a, a goal. So here in Brazil, we are definitely in, in my program, the program that I'm coordinator in cardiology, like uh, as the same in US, Brazil, the first cause of death is uh, cardiovascular disease. And we need to train professionals and educate the population about the cardiovascular disease for decrease this number here in Brazil, like in the U.S. 
I was curious, how what does it look like now in terms of our nurses well respected? Is the pay pretty decent for nurses in Brazil? I really I don't know, so I was kind of curious to ask you that. So maybe we could do that in just a couple of minutes because it's time for us to do a break. So this is all about nursing. I'm your host, Dr. Joyce Batchelor. We're live on the BBF Global Network and Tune In Radio, and it's time for us to take a short break. Did you know that your beliefs create your entire reality? But it's the subconscious beliefs that do most of the creating. Belief Shifter and Life Coach Shiraz can help you identify those limiting beliefs and eliminate them, often in a single session. Like it was almost instant, like I had relief right away. Creating better health, relationships, careers, and finances. Let Shiraz help you step out of safety and into awareness. Definitely something's happening. Uh, it's like a, a flow inside. You know, it feels good. Whether in person or online, Shiraz provides personal coaching, belief shifting. Visit Shiraz at energeticmagic.com or call 416 529 7429. Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Find your greater happiness. Be well, be aware, be magical. There are artists, and then there's Alice Asmar. This award-winning artist has spent her entire life devoted to her artistic pursuits and has had a lifelong fascination with American Indians of the southwestern United States. Her book, Dance to the Great Spirit, showcases her drawings and paintings inspired by sacred rituals of the Pueblo Indians, and four of her lithographs are in permanent collection at the National Museum of American History in the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C. She is one of four artists in the United States States to win a Woolley Fellowship for study in Paris at Le Col des Beaux Arts and has been featured in numerous publications. She's exhibited at the world's most prestigious museums and galleries and recently won a 20 year service award from the Burbank City Council and the inaugural art competition of the Foundation of the United States in Paris. Visit www.asmarart.com, www.aliceasmarinternational.com, and email alice at aliceasmar at aol.com. Welcome back, everyone. You're listening to All About Nursing, live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm Dr. Joyce Batchelor, the host of the show. And just prior to the break, we were talking about the work that's going on in Brazil in terms of really looking at having the nursing schools, um, being able to have curriculum that's being delivered at a high level and making sure that the training that happens is really going to be uh, – Good, so that there's a lot of opportunity to then improve the health care of, of the people that nurses serve, which, of course, is why people go into this profession. I was asking a little bit before we went on the break, because I really don't know in terms of how, like, if nurses make pretty decent money in Brazil, if that's a challenge, because I know that there's opportunities, especially when people are experienced, to be able to travel, and we've had a lot of nurses moving around internationally that causes some other challenges to all of us and so I was just curious if you could say a little bit about that because I know everybody seems to be talking about staffing and the nursing shortage and what do we do with our pipeline and how do we keep them at the bedside and and all of that so maybe you could share a little bit more about that uh, maybe that'd be for you Rita well hi so uh, I don't know if you know that in Brazil, uh, around 8% of the population is uh, like um, around uh, two, uh, 200 million persons uh, enjoy the gratuitous medical services here in Brazil. So our uh, school is uh, gratuit for government, uh, for the, anyone paid uh, for study or for the, the medical service, for us is a challenge to um, to maintain the 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 people with the best uh, outcomes because we have a lot of population and uh, and the public health. So uh, we have uh, this system is the unique in. Uh, is the, the draw about this uh, system is a very important, it's a very uh, uh, strange. And around uh, this patient uh, can enjoy the public health system for free, for all the things. 
and a very in a tertiary system, no, not only in a primary care, but tertiary care, like uh, uh, the cardiac surgery is for people, patients, myocardial infarction, transplants. So it's very important to we uh, say for U.S. that our public health system is very strange in, uh, in the treatment like uh, 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 around the home, uh, oncology uh, uh, patients, uh, chemo, radiotherapy, it's for free. So all the patients, for us, is uh, uh, like an honor we have a uh, system because we can offer the patients with the best uh, outcome and the best uh, quality. Uh, uh, of course, it's not the uh, uh, what we want because we want the the wonderful service. But sometimes, because the money, because the the our budget is not possible to give for the patients what we want. What uh, so? Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. uh, we think that we train the the nurses for this. System is very important for Brazil. Primary care in Brazil is very, very important program, but the, we have a, we need more professionals for this. We need to improve these numbers because we think the prevention and the promotion of health is the best way that we can change the numbers of the the the, the, the principal, the main causes for death in Brazil. And you were talking a little bit about how technology could also be helping get that care out to people and make it more convenient and easier. And um, I know that that's mm -hmm. something that everybody seems to be trying to work on and all these different apps that people are developing that's, and devices you can wear that monitor things. And so I was curious if that's also something that you all are keeping up on to try to really look at how to impact in other ways besides having just more people. Uh, can you say a little bit about that? Do you want to talk? Do you want to to talk us a little bit more about our primary care? Yeah, I mean, if if you're using technology or if there's other ways to address primary care, because it sounds like you've got a lot of people uh, that you need okay. to reach. Okay. Uh, we know that uh, the technology is the, uh, the best way that we can achieve the patient uh, without patients uh, necessarily because we can uh, to see the, the, the care uh, after the hospitalization and um, we have a development about the ATP for the patients with a heart failure, with a patient's post-operative cardiac surgery, because we want to maintain the same, um, the same, uh, recognize the patient, even the patient is not in a hospital. We can, with the technology, monitoring, monitor the patient, to improve the self-monitoring, improve the uh, self-care for these patients. We think that the technology could be the best way to do this for patients. We have uh, the, here in, uh, in uh, our school, we have uh, um, a research about the family and a patient-centric care. And we think that the patient-centric care, to put the patient in his temporary care is the best and the, the best um, uh, that we can do. So technology can uh, um, help us to support us for this. And so technology here, we use all the strategies, videos, blogs, APPs, uh, social media, for achieve the patient. That's wonderful, and I know that that was actually some of the discussion they had today. There was um, a meeting where the National Academy of Medicine uh, had an open forum for the future of nursing 2020-2030, and a big piece of what was being discussed are the technology and other ways to try to impact healthcare because we can't afford to just keep adding people, and there's just not enough people. 
And so I think it's exciting to hear that that's what you're also working on in your uh, country as well. Is there anything else you wanted to say about that or other things you'd like us to know? Um, otherwise, we can hold on that because we're going to be going to a break right now anyway. So this is um, All About Nursing. I'm your host, Dr. Joyce Batchelor. We're live on the BBM Global Network and tune in radio, and we'll continue this conversation when we come back. Baby boomers face many challenges, and sometimes you have to reinvent yourself in order to stay on top. Sharon Ball, nurse practitioner and Christian life and wellness coach, can help. Sharon has written a book called Reinventing Yourself Today, and it can help you through the pangs of changing the course of your life. Whether you are looking to stay on track with new goals, a sensible program to help you shed unwanted pounds, or a full kick-butt life reinvention, Sharon can work with you. Follow your passions and live each day according to your dreams and free yourself from the expectations of others. Sharon comes from the heart and shares her own personal journey to reinvention with her clients. Other self-help books inspired her, but few gave her the steps to improve her life, so she created a plan that works. Stress no more. Let Sharon ball open the door sign up for a complimentary life reinvention consultation today at tinyurl.com forward slash get started for free for more of what life has in store Attorney Renee Marie Smith is changing the way we sell real estate. She wrote a series of books called My Short Sale Guru Guides for all real estate practitioners. Whether you're a homeowner wanting to understand the process, an agent who has been handling short sales for years, or an industry analyst wanting to know how short sales impact your business, Renee uses her vast real estate experience to take a comprehensive look at the recent market phenomenon while relaying it in an easy-to-understand format. Through her company, Smith Title Services, Renee has counseled thousands of short sale participants and processed in excess of a thousand short sales. Her knowledge is transformational for real estate professionals and laymen alike, and her live presentations provide people the opportunity to ask specific questions about their issues. Buy her books and schedule her to speak at your next event. Visit www.smithtitleservices.com or call 305-705-3428 or email her at renee at smithtitleservices.com. Isn't it time to sell your property today? Learn the My Short Sale Guru way. I'm your host, Dr. Joyce Batchelor, and all about nursing. We're live on the BBM Global Network in Tune and Radio. And we've been hearing a lot of very exciting work that's going on in Brazil to look at how to address the needs of the people in Brazil and learning about how the system works to deliver care there. And and I think one of the things that you were talking about just before the break, Rita, that was resonating with what I think we're doing a lot more and doing a better job here in the U.S. as well, is just really looking at patient and family-centered care and how to really engage the, both the patient and the family uh, and and helping to have them understand how to do a better job of taking care of themselves. So maybe you could talk a bit about that, like what kinds of things are you doing to try to really implement that? Um, yes. Here in Brazil, we have a, a, a Brazilian Nursing uh, Association and a lot of societies with specialties that can uh, support the nurses here. For the teachers, professors, we have uh, um, a support for government with uh, PAG. We have uh, we, uh, uh, resources for students. So I think that we we think that we have a good organization for nurses and the professors. We have a, a possibility to train the nurses and to uh, learn, uh, people become nurses. We need to. I think that we need to. Uh, uh, I I reuse the the term like a uh, nurses. We need to infect the persons. We need to uh, convince the persons that nurses is a good profession. Is the the professions get that can change the change the world? I think that the uh, uh, this campaign is nursing now is very important for a uh, show that we are that what we are that what we want for change the world. That's awesome. I know that uh, there's a report coming out that's on like what we need to be doing for sustainable goals for really improving the health 
in the world, and there's a huge role for nurses to play. And so I was curious if, because you've mentioned nursing now a couple of times, if you had like one wish of something that could really happen with this initiative, what would that be? Something that you're really thinking that this could really help us with? Nurse. Nurse, nurse again. If I have a, a big wish, I will be, I would be nurse again. I think that I, I can't, I can't think in another way to, to live. Not on, I'm a nurse, I'm nurse to live. I'm a nurse and I live with this profession 24 hours a day, I think so. And it sounds like what you're saying, too, is that, you know, it, there's a lot of pride that nurses should have in the kind of work that they're doing and have it become something that people really aspire to become because of the kind of difference that they can make in people's lives. Is that sort of uh, on the right track of what you're, you were thinking there? Yes. 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 Definitely. Yeah, you know, on prior shows, I, uh, we've had a couple of different guests, and I think that um, the thing that's been very encouraging is to hear that there's a lot that we have in common, obviously, as you've been describing this evening, between the United States and Brazil and, and other countries. And I think it's like 30 million nurses exist in the world, and the desire to have nurses really take up a, a role that could really help impact access to care and helping people really in their communities with the social determinants yeah. of health and all of that. I think that it would be a very different place for everybody if we could figure out how to do this. So it's exciting. Is there anything else you would like to say? Because we're just about ready to wrap up that you would like the listeners to know before we end the show this evening. Uh, uh, first of all, we would say thank you for listening and uh, show a little bit about the nurse in Brazil. But and I really want to thank you all for being on the show, and it's been great having you and helping us understand a little bit more about the kind of collaboration going on and the things that you're working on. So. You're listening to All About Nursing, live from the BBM Global Network in TuneIn Radio. I'm Dr. Joyce Batchelor, the host of the show, and hopefully you'll tune in with us next week. Thank you. You've been listening to All About Nursing with your host, Dr. Joyce Batchelor. Tune in each week and get a daily dose of nursing and the healthcare services they provide and how nurses are finding innovative ways to address the key healthcare issues they're facing today. Here on Dr. Joyce Batchelor's All About Nursing. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.